This is a 2023 Pace Outback DLX V-Nose. And no, I'm not Doug DeMiro, but this is mine. This is what I've gotten for Paris Creative for my 2022 season. And there's a big story around this. I'm gonna talk about my mindset of why I got this, how I got to here, because this has been a long journey about this. And we're just gonna talk shop on trailers. This episode of Paris Creative is brought to you by Q. Yes, Q is the platform developed by an event professional for event professionals, doing everything from contracts to proposals to timelines. Be sure to check out both Q Essentials, which is free, and Q Premium, which brings all the features. All right, one of the first things I want to mention is that this has a seven pin wiring harness with an electronic brake. Now, I believe this is now a DOT standard. I know it's standard in New York now. Anything I believe is over a thousand pounds empty, 3000 pounds heavy, you have to have it. So here's the seven pin controller on this and this is the emergency brake. So if for some reason this trailer ever got disconnected, it yanks out the pin, it uh, engages the brakes on it so it doesn't go rolling off into the stratosphere. Now, another thing to note, there are two venting systems in here. We also have one on the other side as well. That of course helps with uh, evaporation, making sure moisture doesn't build up in. Now, uh, some trailer owners have opted also for a top mount with an electronic fan. It's something I may consider, especially since I do intend to keep most equipment in here. Um, but I don't think it's gonna be 100% necessary. I am going to monitor things over the year. I'll put in a hygrometer inside, measure temperatures over time, and see if it's something that's necessary. But the good note is there's two vents already installed. Something else to think about when you have a modern trailer, all the lights tend to be LEDs now, of course, saving on power and whatnot. But we do have a couple side markers over here and here. We have our uh, wheel markers over here. And we also have some tail markers along course with brake lights. All right, now another thing to note, these do have 15 inch uh, upgraded radials with a little bit of a better look to it. It has some of the chrome trim on the side and whatnot. This should definitely handle for what I need, but I have seen people, you know, trick this all out and whatnot. But I think this has a good look, especially given the whole white and uh, chrome look on the trailer itself. One additional quirk I want to talk about, if you look over here on the passenger side, there is no access door. Now, this was actually a little bit of a surprise for me. I assumed that most trailers did have side access doors, but the more research I did, um, they're a little bit more hit and miss when it comes to the smaller trailers. Now, personally, I don't need them. I actually think it'll be a benefit because it'll allow me the use of more of this side of the wall to put my e-track up and do a little bit more creative use of that. But something to consider if you are looking at a trailer um, and you do want something with a side door, especially in this size, you might have to look a little bit deeper to try to get that all together. Now, I guess we are gonna talk one more quirk on this is this is a five by eight with a actual ramp. Apparently a lot of five by eights have more of the swing barn styles on this. Mine does not. Um, I absolutely wanted the ramp. Now, uh, apparently there are five by tens that are out there. Um, I know of one person that has one. Trying to find a five by 10 um, was gonna be nearly impossible, especially in this day of age of supply chain issues. And also because of my narrow, narrow, narrow driveway, there's no way I was gonna fit anything wider than a five foot trailer. So five by eight is more than sufficient for what I needed anyways. I'll just make more efficient use of the space. But um, for those that have not seen uh, ramp doors before, it has a single handle on it. It does have two locking hinges on this. Couple uh, padlocks going here. I've already uh, have on order some locks for it. I'll talk about that later on. We just get those out of the way. We're gonna pull down the ramp. Welcome to the inside. All right, everybody, I'm squatted down a little bit in here because I am just slightly too tall for this. I am about five foot 10. Uh, the ceiling I wanna say is about five, eight, five, nine. So I do have to squat just a little bit coming in. But to be honest, I expected this. Um, it's something I can personally manage. Taller people, this would definitely be a bit more of a challenge. But you know what? I really can't complain now. One thing I do want to complain about is this trim that they put in here. They definitely didn't take great care um, and some of it's a little split whatnot. Super, super thin. I want to call this one eighth inch, just some ripwood that they put in here. I may gussy this up a little bit more. But you know, it serves a purpose for now. Now, on every trailer, you're gonna see screws coming in about every two feet because this is a um, 
a aluminum cage construction and each one of these screws are hitting that particular um, you know beam that's coming down now when I eventually put in my e-track and everything I'm gonna to have to make sure it bites into that so there's gonna be some care of measurement to make sure that uh, meshes up but it's very simple and straightforward once you start kind of knowing the ins and outs of what's going on inside the trailer now, how do we even get to here in the first place? You know, I've talked for years since easily 2013, my second year um, as Paris Creative, about do I want to have a trailer or do I want to have a van? Back then, I was rolling in a 2009 uh, GTI that was able to fit kind of everything in, but it was a very, very tight fit. And even at one point, I even thought of getting one of those uh, rotoplastic trailers that you could find at that time. Apparently, they are just not around anymore for something super lightweight, but they'd be able to carry the basics around. And while in Europe, it's very common to see smaller cars hauling you know, huge trailers, it's just not a, nearly a thing as it is here in the States. And I wanted to make sure I was safe while I was doing all this, and it just did not seem it was going to uh, be a good parent. So as time and time went on, I started debating about having a panel van, a sprinter van, you know, something in that regard that I could put in there. But the costs were, you know, fairly prohibitively high to have uh, both a daily driver and a van. Ultimately, I found a 2011 Town & Country that I did end up trading in my GTI, which I really wish I didn't. Man, I really love that GTI. Um, but I did roll with that town and country literally till just two weeks ago. As time went on, um, I definitely started leaning towards not getting a replacement minivan. It was just, you know, I started getting spoiled. I was leaving equipment in my car for weeks upon time, uh, which of course complicated things, especially since I got my Totematic, which that review is overdue. I really need to do that uh, video on that soon. But, you know, I could keep it in my town and country, but I had to orient my seats a certain way. It consumed a lot of space. So it was just becoming a bit more impractical. So you know, I was looking at um, what was around here now in 2022. And of course, the supply chain issues is still dominating the market. You know, even finding decently used over 100,000 mile city vans, uh, panel vans, um, sprinters, things of that nature, they're just incredibly high in price. And it was somewhere around the 25,000 or so range to start for something uh, around like say 60 to 80,000 miles um, within the past like five years, things that, you know, that I would want to invest in that I think will at least last me say five to seven years. So then came a couple weeks ago when I uh, took my trip to upstate New York, then down to DC, my exhaust started just falling apart on the vehicle. And, you know, looking up uh, some of the numbers, it was going to cost me somewhere uh, 2000 or even more to replace that. And as I was coming back, my brakes started to fade. And that's actually one negative of the town and country, especially when you load it up for considerable amounts of times. The brakes um, and the struts and also even the tires really uh, get some additional wear on it. And you have to replace them very, very frequently. So I was really starting to dread that idea of having say that uh, minivan replacement um, which then led me to looking for a mid-size SUV uh, that could uh, complement what I would need. So then I started researching more on what was out there for the SUV side you know the Cherokees I, I, it just didn't really catch my eye it's definitely a, a very dated design now um, you know the, uh, the Highlanders definitely just too much for what I wanted the, the Pathfinders a little better but still not quite my style and then I stumbled across a 2022 Honda Passport in this uh, very nice kind of burgundy red and looking at the specs and everything it was definitely something that was really catching my eye very quickly the flip side of that is it didn't have the towing package to start with it and I am still waiting on parts with that as I'm filming this. So that's a little bit of a pain. I'm probably going to have to rent um, either a truck uh, to tow this or get myself a uh, small moving van for the next one or two events that I have as I'm you know, patiently waiting uh, to get that towing package. Now this trailer is not inexpensive, especially with the way prices are. I would have expected, say, two, three years ago that this would have been maybe 3000 3500 or so. <laughs> this clocks in at $6,000. $100 billion. 
works now, yes, it is brand new. Yes, um, it should last me a long time. Yes, it's totally tax deductible uh, for the purposes of your business, but it is a big sink uh, to think about in the first place. Um, and to be honest, I don't think the pricing situation is gonna change anytime soon. I completely anticipate that it is going to take years for things to settle down. So if you are in the, uh, the market for something, you know, you're just gonna have to bite the bullet and deal with what today's prices look like. You might be able to find a private sale that you might be able to save some dollars on, but going new, car market, van market, trailer market, you will pay a premium um, the way things are right now. Well, that's the video and I truly hope you liked it. You know, please stay tuned with me on this journey to transform this trailer. I'm gonna go through a lot of steps again, going through all this. And naturally, if you wanna see more, check out my videos below and all. Stay tuned, everybody.